What's up, nerds? I'm Ben. And I'm Scoot. And today, we're tackling the latest Netflix original film from director Duncan Jones, Mute. Is it better than Cloverfield Paradox? Is it worse than Cloverfield Paradox? Stay tuned to find out. So Mute is the story of Leo, played by Alexander Skarsgård. Or is it Sarsgård? Skarsgård? That sounds right. Anyway, he's a bartender who gets pulled into the criminal underworld of a futuristic Berlin when his girlfriend mysteriously goes missing. Along the way, he comes into contact with an array of colourful characters, wouldn't you say, Scoot? Very. Including Paul Rudd with a crazy moustache, Justin Theroux in a crazy wig, and Dominic Monaghan in a crazy kimono. Scoot, I need to check with you right now if you know the connection between Dominic Monaghan and Paul Rudd. Do, 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 do. Oh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. Paul Rudd was in Ant-Man, right? Yep. And who else was in Ant-Man? A female actress. Evangeline Lilly yes. from Lost. That's right. Also starring Dominique Monaghan. Yes. So that's the connection. Cool story, Hansel. But let's get to the big question. Is Mute any good? I think it's pretty good. I think it's been getting a bit of a bum rap online. And I, I mean, it's way better than Cloverfield Paradox or Bright. So this is a, as far as I'm concerned, it's a win for Netflix. I don't think it's the strongest film I've ever seen or the best thing I've seen this year by any chance, but I think it's pretty pretty enjoyable and it's pretty pretty full on. Yeah, I think it's it's getting fashionable now to just shit on Netflix uh, originals yeah. because, you know, and some conspiracy theorists out there would say that, you know, it, it, these are cinema chains and studios paying off film critics to, you know, rag on these films. But yeah, the fact of the matter is this, this movie is neither great nor terrible. It's sort of, it's just somewhere in the middle. Yeah, correct. It's... And we'll talk about this a bit further, but I think it, it's, it really seems like a wannabe Blade Runner a lot of the time. And I think it's super noticeable because Blade Runner, the Blade Runner sequel only came out last year. So I've been reading a bit about Mute and there's, Duncan Jones has been using this script or had this script for a long time. And it kind of sucks for him to, you know, finally get his chance to make this dream movie. And then all these other, you know, futuristic film noir-ish films come out within the last 12 months. So Yeah, it's a shame because I know that I saw the original concept art for this right after Moon came yeah, out yeah. and he said, you know, this was the film, this is the passion project that he kind of wanted to make. Then he went off and did Source Code, which is more of a sure thing. Um, but yeah, if this had come out back then, I do wonder if the reaction would have been a bit more positive. You would have been able to judge the film like on its own merits instead of comparing it to these other cyberpunk films that have come out. 100%. And Altered Carbon, which has only came out last month yeah. as well. And Joel Kinnaman looks very similar to Alexander Skarsgård. Yeah, it's unfortunate. I mean. It's, it's probably more of a noir. That's probably one of the things you, good things you can say is this is more noir than a lot of those cyberpunk kind of movies of late. Like yeah. straight up, it just happens to be set in the future. It, but Yeah, and one of those posters is very like straight out of the 1950s for this film. And yeah, you're right in that you, it is definitely set in the future, but it's kind of almost a realistic future. We see just kind of evolution of current ideas like drones delivering food and, and whatnot. So it doesn't seem that far-fetched. And I also found that there was a dramatic difference between the daytime scenes and the nighttime scenes because I felt like the nighttime scenes were very much Blade Runner, but the daytime stuff kind of just felt like modern day Berlin. Let's talk about performances. Yep. How'd Sarsgaard go? I thought he was really good for a guy who does not speak in the film. I thought he was pretty expressionful. Like, expressionful, is that a word? I thought he it was. Is now. He's, yeah, I thought he was full of expression with his face. Um, I thought, I actually really liked his character. I. Not really liking him as an actor normally, I thought he did wonderful. My uh, opinion of him was uh, kind of raised when I saw uh, Big Little Lies. And obviously he's been picking up a lot of awards for that role. Mm. And Paul Rudd, in one of the weirdest roles you've ever seen him yep. in, um, he's actually kind of like the second lead in this, isn't he? I thought he was going to be more of a supporting character. Yeah, so did I. And I thought he was going to be the funny supporting character. Yeah. Um, which he is not. He is, I kind of think, slightly miscast because I could not get my head around the fact that he wasn't being Brian Fantana from Anchorman with his big Yeah, it's, it's a little bit Brian Fantana and a little bit uh, Bill the Butcher but, from Gangs of New York. Yeah, and there's very little comedy he's in it. Kind of, he's kind of a borderline psychopath. Yeah, he's kind of scary. Uh, Justin Theroux plays his offsider and I think he's much more kind of borderline good, bad. And I think he's, as an actor, he's able to pull that off because he's not known for these huge comedic roles. But yeah, I, I'm not 100% sure about Paul Rudd in this. And he's gotta go. Oh. No soda. I do want to briefly touch on Duncan Jones and where do you think he'll go from here? Like, if this is truly a disaster, you know, 
if it's a Netflix disaster, it's not a box office disaster. So do you reckon this will hurt him at all? After, especially after Warcraft yeah, underperforming. So I, think, I think Warcraft definitely kind of hurt him. But it's weird that he went from uh, super underperforming to making his dream project. So who knows with Hollywood. I, like, I could see him doing something a bit more safer like Source Code next. Because um, the Warcraft sequel is definitely not happening. Which is a good thing, by yes, the way. Yes. I thought you liked Warcraft. That was fine. <laughs> so summing up, Scoot, do you recommend this film for people to watch? I think if you're really into Altered Carbon, which is really big right now, you're probably going to spend a lot of time comparing it, but it's definitely worth a look in. I think it hits all the kind of right marks with film noir. It's got that kind of sci-fi twist, has some interesting performances um, and some not so interesting things. But I think it's worth a shot because if you go into the mentality that all these Netflix originals suck, I think you could potentially be missing out on things. So I think this one's worth checking out. Maybe not so much Cloverfield or Bright. Well, that'll just about do it for us. I'm Ben. I'm Scoot. And we'll see you at the movies, nerds. Yeah. Where you go?